It's Made It Mondays with Crafting Cousins. Let's craft y'all! Hey y'all, it's Kay. I'm going to use this farmer's market calendar, especially the last page, the farm fresh Christmas trees on the December part. And let's make a tree skirt, really a box. I'm going to use this wrapping paper that I got at Target in this buffalo check pattern. Of course, I'll need some Mod Podge for this project. Some Waverly chalk paint in the colors Plaster and Crimson. Some five gallon paint sticks. I got mine at Lowe's and I will be using 12 of them. And I will be using some of this Luan plywood that is quarter inch deep. I will need two that is 12 by 15 inch. And I will need two that is 12 inch by 16 inch. Keep in mind, yours may have to be a different size because it's based on the tree stand that you use. I'm going to use my miter saw for part of this project, but later I'll add in a new tool. I'll need my hammer and some nails. I am using brads and finishing nails. When I was about halfway through this project, thanks to Trish, I found out about a four inch Mighty Might table saw that I got at Harbor Freight. That's $33 I ever spent. And this is how I cut my paint sticks. I have six that are 10 inches long and four that are 16 inches long and two that are 15 and 7 eighths inches long. Those are the two I will use on the front. And I will use four pieces of some two by two. This will give me my height for my box. They are 13 inches long. The first thing I'm going to do is take the two shorter of the Luan boards and I'm going to give them about a coat and a half of my plaster chalk paint. And now I'm taking all of those five gallon paint sticks and giving them a good coat of the red chalk paint. I will paint all of the edges and one side. There is no reason to paint the back because it will not be showing. This also took about a coat and a half. And now I'm just going to cut off the very edge of this calendar, the writing at the bottom. And I'm coming in with some Mod Podge and put a nice even coat. I'm sorry, my camera got a little dark here. And then I'll carefully smooth that out onto my Luan. I end up using one for the front and the back, but that's just because the back was a little uneven. And so I'll give it a coat on the outside as well once the first coat has dried. And now I'm coming in with my Luan and I'm going to apply more Mod Podge and place down my wrapping paper carefully and smooth it out really well. And once it's dry, again, put a coat of Mod Podge on the top. This will be my two sides, the two larger of the pieces of Luan. And now I'm going to begin assembly of my tree box. I'm going to take those two by twos and lay them carefully down. And you notice they're a little longer than my pieces are. That's because I cut my pieces at 12 to save on Luan for another project. So I'm going to tack them down, first of all, in both corners. I will come back later and place another nail in the middle. You could do it at this step if you would like. I just wanted to make sure I had it exactly right before I came back with the last nail. And I repeat this again for the second side. And now I'm going in with my sides. And yes, I did get someone to hold it for me. My poor husband. It was just so much easier to do when you have a second set of hands. So he came in 
and bailed me out, but he made me promise that he wouldn't be on camera. So I'm again just putting some nails and tacking it down. And I just keep it as square as I can and lined up. And I'll just go in and tack all four corners. And now I'm putting on the last side. And this project is starting to form a box. And now let's go in and put on all of those five gallon paint stick trim pieces. I'll start with the bottom each time and then the side in the middle. And that trims it out nicely. Here's the second one because you really need to do the two sides first. And I'm touching up those nails with some paint and now I'm coming in on the front. Starting again at the top and then I go ahead and place in my sides just to make sure I have my spacing perfect. And get everything tacked down nicely with some little finishing nails. Cover up my nails with some paint. And there it is. I love this project. It's going to go on our farmhouse Christmas tree that is at Trisha's house. Merry Christmas, y'all. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you're new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the red subscribe below. Make sure you ring the bell when it comes up and you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload videos three days per week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this tree collar, I'm going to be using this 10 inch roll of metal flashing that I got at Lowe's. I need some duct tape this canvas drop cloth, some Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson, two binder clips, some gloves and some tin snips, and some spray adhesive. First thing I'm going to do is carefully roll out my metal flashing. I'm wearing gloves because it is quite sharp and it will cut you. And I'm going in and measure about a six feet piece. It is so large I couldn't get it all on camera. And then I'm using my square to come in and draw a line with my permanent marker. You will need to measure your tree, how far around you want your piece to be, and then add at least three inches so that it can overlap in the back. And now I'm using those tin snips and I'm carefully going in and just cutting out my tin. And now I'm taking my duct tape and I'm going to cover all of the edges and the ends very carefully because at this point I'm not wearing gloves. It was just too difficult. But you do want to cover all of the ends because not only will it cut you, it will cut your fabric as well. One of the ends was kind of sharp, and so I covered it actually with two pieces of duct tape. And this is probably the hardest part of this entire project, honestly. And you want to keep that tape straight because it will show through the fabric. I had a couple of issues at the very ends, and I didn't worry about those because they're in the back. And now I'm using spray adhesive and putting down a nice good covering. And guys, it worked great. And now I'm going in with my piece of fabric. Of course, I want it wider than my 10 inches. I cut mine at 14 inches. And I'm just going in and smoothing it down, adding more glue where I need it. This is a nest that I ran off on my computer and I'm just cutting it out 
and leaving the center part. I'm going to use this as a pattern to trace onto my fabric. But first I'm going to go in and take all of those edges and pull them down tight across that flashing and I'm just using hot glue. I'm using my Gorilla Glue sticks and it works out extremely well. But it does get really hot so be careful. And on that bottom part where it had a raw edge, I just turned it under and put some glue and made it look pretty. And then I go in and miter my edges and glue those down as well. And there's the finished edge. And now I'm going in right in the middle and trace out my S. And yes, I probably could have sponged it on, but I was afraid it would bleed and I didn't want a lot of bleedage on my tree collar. So I'm going in with a really small brush and I'm just going to paint in my S. And as soon as it's dry, I turn it around. I use those binder clips and attach them to the top and the bottom. And guys, it held surprisingly well. And there it is. And there it is around the tree. I love this one so much. It's very simple, but it's really me. Merry Christmas. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this tree collar, I'm going to be using this basket that I got at the Goodwill store for less than a dollar. Some of this rope twine that I got at Hobby Lobby it is kind of a larger diameter. Some burlap fabric, about six feet long. Some brown spray paint. And this bow left over from another project. The first thing I'm going to do is take this box cutter and I'm going to cut out the center part of this bottom. I start out a little bit away from that line because I just want to be careful to get out some of the middle part first and then come back in and do some fine detailing. This basket was so thick and it took quite a while to get this done. And there it is, looking much better. And not rough at all, but you could always sand it. I took my basket out into my garage and I spray painted it in the brown paint. If I were you, I would not choose the one I chose because it remained a little sticky. I mark the middle of the front and the middle of the back with some of the jute twine just so I can keep my ribbons even. And now I just measure my burlap by the side of my basket and that's how I decide how wide I'm going to make my fabric strips. I'm going in and just remove one of the strands at that marker and pull it out. Just keep working till I pull it to the end. And then I just cut down that line with my scissors. And now I'm going in with my pieces of burlap and I'm just going to start at the back and work my way around going in and out making a basket weave. Nothing difficult at all. And now I'm starting the second one. I started, guys, at the beginning in the very middle of the front and worked my way around on both sides to the back. I just wanted to make sure that my pieces were long enough that they were going to make it all the way around. And I found out as long as my pieces were about six feet long, they were just fine. So it really didn't matter if I started in the front or if I started in the back. You will have to measure your basket to make sure you can work your way around. And you can see here that I did two rows of burlap and then skipped one, two rows of burlap and then skipped one and two rows again. That's because on the middle open areas, I'm going to use my twine. 
I'm tying my twine in the middle of the back. As always, I'm starting there and I'm going in and out, just like I did with the ribbon. I will need to put five strands of twine in between each of these open areas. And that's what I do. I just start off and I do about two rows at a time by cutting my twine extra long. And that's how it turns out. I love how this looks. Let's add a bow right in the middle front. I'm just fastening it on with a chenille stem. And there it is under my tree. I love it so much. It's one of my favorites. Merry Christmas, y'all. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye y'all!